won a championship. Now we got the Clippers, Nets, and the Suns, and the Clippers opened at plus 850, now sit at plus 700, and the third best odds after the John Wall news. Here's an excited Steve Ballmer on his team's outlook. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Not only your best player, but one of the preeminent handful of top players in the world. I'm really excited about that. And, you know, Kawhi's in the gym, he's working, and, uh, we got got our fingers crossed. Everything keep, keeps going on schedule. How much are you dying just to see this team healthy for not just the full season, but the entire postseason too? Because you really kind of haven't had the chance to do see that. I think we stay healthy next year. We're going to be having a chance to talk way late into the uh, spring season. How's that? All right, we had a handful of emotions just there. Now, Freddie, are you buying this uh, Clippers legit title threat? No, but I want what he has. I want what he has. I want to sip what he has. Yeah, yeah, what's the old line from the movie? Yeah. You know, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll have what he's having yeah, yeah, from yeah, that yeah. standpoint. A lot of emotion. There are a lot of owners in sports. Mad Dog, Courtney, you know. and Victoria. Mm -hmm. Steve Ballmer's one of my favorite guys. because the personality. He, <laughs> and he's the ultimate fan that owns a team yeah. but enjoys everything about it. But he mentioned the key word there if we are healthy the keywords if we are healthy and that is something that even he knows if Kawhi Lynn is healthy there, there's no guarantee he's gonna play 65 or 70 games because yeah. they want to rest him with the playoffs to minimize the risk of him being injured Paul George had his injury issues last year and I thought Paul George was fantastic carrying this basketball team and now you're hoping that John Wall can be if he's one fourth or one fifth of what he had in the Washington Wizards that's going to help them out a little bit but yeah I'm not going to buy them not saying legitimate title contenders I just don't see them winning an NBA championship because unfortunately and I hate to do this the Clippers are going to clip something is going to happen <laughs> oh, where you know what they're going to be like yeah. they're going to be like Charlie Brown on the mound used to baseball oh, now man. they're going to be Charlie Brown on the mound and he's thinking the fastball is going to work and next thing you know the ball hits and all his clothes fly off that always needs <laughs> to happen with the Clippers at a certain point I'm hoping that's not the case I love Steve Ballmer and what they've been able to yeah. do they're legitimate title contenders. I just don't see them winning a championship next year. I like the bet. I, I, plus 700. Is that what it was? Yeah, I, yeah. I like that. I, yeah. I would take a run at it. Bomber should be careful because this is a star cross franchise. Something always goes wrong. And they've had a lot of bad luck, so you shouldn't put pressure on him, and he should lay low. Uh, we'll see how we do. You know, yeah. He's almost yeah. putting some extra pressure. He shouldn't do that. And he's making Wall out to be, uh, can I see Wall play 60 games? He hasn't played in two years. <laughs> but if Wall is effective and motivated, you bring Leonard into the mix, you got George, they have a pretty good nucleus, they should have beaten the Pelicans in that playing thing. They lost a terrible loss when they had a big lead in the fourth quarter. But they have a chance to be a very, very good team. But Kawhi has to play. Yep. And when he does play, he's top three or four guys in the NBA. But he, he's got to play. And he's got, I mean, the last time we saw Kawhi, they collapsed against Denver in the bubble. And then they got hurt last year against Utah. He plays... They could be very, very good. All right, Courtney. Legit? Yeah. Not so much. Not yet. I won't okay. say that I'm going to, like, put them over the other, like, three teams that I had mentioned, Warriors, Mavs, and Grizzlies in the West, but their entire postseason hopes rest on whether Ka Kawhi Leonard can, can stay healthy. And, I mean, Paul George, they got 31 games out of him last year. Injuries have not been kind to the Clippers, but when it comes to John Wall and the upgrade that they made, we don't know if he's going to start at the point guard position or if he's going to come off the bench. This is a team that likes to shoot off passes. They were 39 0.4% on catch and shoot threes. That was the best in the NBA last year. So I think that there are signs there that are pointing to this team being one of the best in, in the West. Will they contend for a title? Their window is open right now, but I'm with Freddie. This team clippers too often for me to go all in on them <laughs> just yet. They've been clipped off. Yeah, you know? it, although going back it's to the point of the Golden State Warriors, yeah, it is, it's become a verb, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Uh -huh. Going back to the point about the Golden State Warriors, how how really weird is it to imagine that two years ago this organization had 15 wins? Mm -hmm. Two years mm -hmm. later, talking about that, you know, the Golden State Warriors are back running the NBA. If somebody told you that, that they would be in a better position than a team led by LeBron James in Los Angeles. They would have told you that you were out of your rabbit behind mind when but it came to that. But just a year ago, a lot of people, including on this show, were ruling out Golden State yeah. winning a title. And Steph Curry remembered. Oh, uh, yeah. He did the whole, he remembered. Yeah. Good point. Mm -hmm. And they lost to Memphis in that playing yeah. game Absolutely. last year. Yeah. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. Curry did a heck of a job. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what their motivation is. But I think the Clippers got a chance. Again, Western Conference is going to be very, very Ooh. good. Yep. Uh, but the Clippers, if they are into it, 
and they play some games, all right? And they're not 40 games. Play some ball games. Yeah. They play yeah. 65, 70 games, the three of them together. He's a good coach. Ty Lue's really they, He's a good coach. Mm -hmm. really. They do that. They could be very dangerous in the postseason. It really could. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Matt. Let's, <laughs> how about we sing our way to the association? Because the Phoenix Suns, uh, DeAndre Ayton is about to become a restricted free agent, and all NBA teams can start to make offers with the Suns being able to match. However, looking at max contract options, the Suns would have to give Ayton an extra year and almost $3 million more per season compared to the rest of the NBA. Here's more from our very own Adrian Wojnarowski on Phoenix and their options with Ayton. I think there's a lot of sign and trade options. Uh, scenarios out there uh, that they'll be able to start working through once we get the Thursday that Suns have had a reluctance to give DeAndre in a max contract, but I do believe it's available to him out in the marketplace. Can they find a package of assets back that makes sense for them? All right, Courtney, I'm going to start with you. Is the Suns championship window closing very quickly? It doesn't have to close if they're okay. aggressive in what they do in free agency. Let's not forget, this is a team that was first in net rating, fifth in offense, third in defense, and fourth in effective field goal percentage last season. Last I checked, that makes a very good basketball team. But the way that they played against Dallas, that's our lasting memory of Chris Paul at 37 years old absolutely disappearing in that series. Devin Booker wasn't great either. Like, they have a lot of holes that they have to fix in order to upgrade this roster to contend in the West. Now, what Woj was saying about DeAndre Ayton is interesting. I like the idea of a sign-and-trade for the Phoenix Suns. I'm just not so sure that you're going to get a star player in return. But if you can get some role players, get some guys that can fill out the rotation for the Phoenix Suns, I say do it because... Because it's clear that there's a reluctance from this team to give Aiton what he's eligible for on the rookie max extension. So if you can find another team, and trust me, there's plenty that see what this guy did two years ago in their run to the NBA Finals in the way that he played against other big men, there's going to be teams that want a young, talented center in the fold. So I think that they could get a considerable package back. I'm just not so sure in terms of finding another star to go alongside Chris Paul at this point of his career and also to, to align with Devin Booker that you're going to get that. But if you want to contend in the West, you have to be aggressive in free agency and throughout the rest of this offseason if you're the Phoenix Suns because everybody else will pass you up because everybody else is getting better. I'm not sure what Phoenix should do. Mm -hmm. um, it's a tricky call. For whatever the reason, you would think this would be a no-brainer. He's a young center. He's played pretty well. And they're, they're, they're thinking about not giving him what he wants from a max standpoint. Yeah. Maybe they know more about the player than we do. Yep. you got to keep that in mind. But he's a – listen, he's got a lot of talent. He's good going to the basket. He can make a 12-foot jump shot. He's athletic. Um, I'm going to – I don't think the window's closing, though. Okay. Because I do think that with Booker, you have to figure Paul, after he did an absolute no-show and was a disaster and got destroyed by Donkic in Game 7. Donkic had 27 points in the first half of Game 7, and Paul did not score. Mm -hmm. And this is supposed to be one of the great point guards in the history of the NBA. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you would think that that would fuel Phoenix. Right. So I, they did win 64 games. So I would think, like Courtney said, I would think the window is still open. I just don't know what to do with the center. That's a very tricky call. It's interesting. I'm glad you raised the point because whatever's going on, Chris, with DeAndre Ayton and Phoenix, whatever personality conflict is going on, usually a guy like that about to get into the prime of his career in a new age NBA, that way he can play. They give him the money. They would have given him the money already. They, they, already. they, they have not, yeah. right, they haven't even been hesitant. They basically said, no, we're not giving this to DeAndre Ayton. Mm -hmm. Based on that alone, I'll say that their championship window is closing because you and Courtney made the point in terms of the Western Conference. More than ever before, second by second when it comes to professional sports. You can't just be in the middle. You either got to be here high, you got to be low. Phoenix right now is a high team that won 64 games in the regular season, like you mentioned. But now the question is that they don't resign DeAndre Ayton, then who's going to replace him? Do you go out to Rudy Gobert in free agency and bring to be a rim protector where he can do screen and roll but doesn't have the offensive skill set that DeAndre Ayton possesses? Chris Paul's not getting any younger. The NBA is getting younger, but Chris Paul's not getting any younger. And everybody now has a blueprint to say, if you attack and wear out his legs, you're going to wear out that 37-year-old point guard. Yeah. He's not going to get to being an elite point guard once again because of his age. And that's not a knock on Chris Paul. That puts a lot more pressure on Devin Booker and Mikhail Bridges. And they're hoping that whoever's the backup point guard, they get somebody else or they go with the young man behind Chris Paul, that he can do that. He's not ready to be a primetime player. When you got all those questions surrounding a team that won 64 games and, like you said, 
Luka Doncic has had his way. It looked like, you know, he made what I call cir circus shots. Where you do that, <laughs> and you can ride the elephant in a circus. And that's how he destroyed Phoenix in that game seven. If that's yep. going to continue to happen, that's why I think the championship windows closing. That was one of the most embarrassing game seven home losses in the history of the NBA. I agree. They got booed off yeah, the court with yeah. a team that won 64 games and went down 40 at the half, mm -hmm. whatever it was. Yeah, that would have never happened in the 80s and 90s. No. It Bob Cousy. Never happened. Wouldn't it happen that with Bob Cousy? That completely negated everything they had done. You're not drawing me offside for the whole J.J. <laughs> Reddick thing. Uh-uh. I'm not doing that. Uh-uh. Oh All right, Courtney, come on in, Ben. Please. Please help me out here. I mean, like, just take a look at everybody else's roster in the West. Take a look at the Golden State Warriors. Take a look at a team like the Clippers that all of a sudden now has you know, incredible odds to, to contend for a championship. And, you know, like we've talked about, that's a team that has failed to meet expectations over the last few years in spite of the talent that they have on their roster. So if you're not getting better, if you're not being aggressive in trying to upgrade some of those spots and, you know, like, like, uh, Mad Dog was talking about with Chris Paul at this point of his career and finding, you know, somebody else to be a pick and roll partner. Uh, if you do move on from DeAndre Ayton, I'm not so sure there's that many upgrades on the offensive side at that position. Rudy Gobert's not that guy. He's a rim protector for you, but DeAndre Ayton will give you more from an offensive standpoint. I'm not sure who they have in mind. Like, that's the thing that I try to rack my brain about here because it feels like you have a young center who is an incredible two-way player, what's the problem? Why are you not giving him the extension? So is there something more that we don't know about? Potentially, but this to me seems like a no-brainer. I just don't understand why they've been hedging this entire time, and they can't afford to do that because of what everyone else in the West, those who are actually contending for a championship, trying to chase where the Golden State Warriors are, everyone else is getting better. Dallas is going to get better. And yes, I know there's a whole Jalen Brunson thing that you guys talked about at the top of the show. They're still, they still have Luka Doncic. Memphis is a very good team. The Clippers look right now like they are a very good team <laughs> in, in contending in the top half of the West next year. Where do you even fit the Suns in there? They were the number one seed last year, won 64 games in the regular season. Yet, if you were to list like one through eight of the playoffs right now, I'm not so sure that you wouldn't have them as a play-in team next year. Wow. Uh, uh, Courtney is right about, you know, Zion Williamson in New Orleans. They're going to be better. Oklahoma City, a terrible team. They Good drafting. Great they draft. be the, yeah. uh, throw in Denver with Murray. I mean, 100%. Very, uh, the, the, you got to figure the Clippers. Wall, Wall goes there. Uh, Kawhi, Kawhi maybe hope. plays 40 games. Mm -hmm. Can we expect that? How about 35? Maybe, maybe right. 60. Right. <laughs> maybe. You got him. We'll see. Courtney's right. We, it's yeah. a very tough conference. It's